Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have a bunch of new cream makeup to test out. There are a couple things I've been playing with, but actually there are a lot of brand new products to me. So I thought I would hop on, test out some new makeup, super chill, very casual. It's Saturday here, so I don't wanna to spend too long getting ready, but I did wanna test out some new things. So let's get into it. First off is the new Kopari Tripeptide Lip Cloud. This is a lip oil, I think, and it's brand new. I'm opening it for the first time. I've been really excited to try this. It is slightly minty, I think, but I do love the Chubby Doe Foot applicator. I always love that. And this is a lip oil that has like a light pink tint. I think it's gonna be clear on the lips, but it includes peptides which help with anti-aging and loss of firmness in the lips. So I'm just gonna prep the lips a little bit. It smells minty, but it doesn't feel tingly on the lips. It's very, very subtle and it's shiny, but it's not glassy. Like it's not anything like the Dior lip oil, which I think is more like a gloss. This feels more thin. It feels like it's gonna sink in more quickly and it feels a little bit more like a treatment than like a cosmetic product. I'm happy there's no lip tingling happening. The next thing is the Charlotte Tilbury Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Sunscreen Invisible UV, UV Flawless Primer. I feel like Charlotte Tilbury always has the longest product names. So this is brand new to me. As you can see, they sent this over and this is an all chemical SPF and it seems to be a slightly silicone-y primer, I'm guessing. It says apply on its own after your magic skincare or under foundation. So I have applied my regular um, skincare, AM skincare underneath. How does this work? Oh, I was trying to twist it off. You actually press to open like that. That's pretty cute. So my one concern with an SPF primer is whether you're getting sufficient SPF protection. Because with a usual SPF, you want to apply, I think it's two teaspoons to the face and neck. So I usually slather it on. Um, I'm gonna start out a little bit conservatively with this and then layer on if I can. Oh, actually you do need to twist off the bottle or the cap to um, remove the foil tab and then you click to open. I really like this packaging. I don't think I've seen a tube like this with the um, clicky lid, but it's very travel friendly. And this is, um, how much is this? It's one ounce and it actually gives you an expiration date. It says expires June 23rd. I don't know if you can see that right there, but I'm really glad that they give you that date. So it's about a year from when I received it. So I'm just gonna start with two fingers for now and we'll see how this goes. I'm actually not familiar with any Charlotte Tilbury primers, so this is going to be new for me. I can already tell you this is more primer than I would conventionally use with primer, but because this is an SPF, I wanna use a little bit more. This feels really nice. It's it's really more like a lotion. It actually doesn't feel silicone-y. It feels more like a classic lotion texture. And it does have quite a bit of glow. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm sure it's more pronounced under the lights, but yeah, a lot of glow happening. It has this like um, very light beige color, but it's not actually tinted. That's just the color of the lotion and it is all chemical so it's not going to leave a white cast i think that's great all skin tones can use it but it's definitely moisturizing personally i think i could skip moisturizer with this because it does have a lot of um, moisture packed in there i'm gonna stop there personally i would probably wear my regular spf under this anyway just because i like that extra protection and 
This is only one ounce, so I'm not gonna bring it down my neck because it's a pricey product, but I do like that it's SPF 50. I would just consider this like a moisturizing primer that also happens to have SPF, but I wouldn't probably use this as my primary SPF. That's just me because I like to be thorough about my sun protection. I do think this is going to give me some pore smoothing qualities because it does have that very slight silicone feel. It's not pilling or doing anything weird with my skincare, but I do think it'll give me that skin smoothing quality. So moving into foundation, I have a hotly contested item. This is the Jones Road What the Foundation foundation. And I'm sure you've seen this a million times on TikTok. It's been controversial. It's gone viral. Um, Credo Beauty sent these over to me in the shade medium as well as the shade medium honey. I'm going to guess the shade medium is a good match for me. Let me open this up and see. It comes in this box and then it comes in jar packaging. So let me open these up. It is a really nice um, glass uh, what's this word? Glass jar. I can already tell. I think medium honey is going to be too deep for me right now. I think medium is going to be the perfect match. Um, I am a little nervous because I'm already seeing a lot of oil in the cap. So there's the actual lid and then the plastic protector. And I have heard this is a very glowy foundation. I think there are a lot of oils in here. This is the shade medium, which I think will be a good match for me right now. But yeah, like a drop of oil just slid onto my hand. It's sliding down. So we'll see. I mean, I have nowhere to be today, so we can take some risks. This is definitely like a super sheer coverage, natural kind of foundation. I can already tell this isn't going to be something that's going to build up a lot of pigment on the skin. And it's definitely more about that kind of glowy skin tint sort of look. So this is one layer on. I am super shiny. Um, I am going to try to build up some coverage. I have still got some redness around my nose. I've got some pigmentation along my jawline and I do have like an under the skin like cyst happening on my chin. It's the worst kind of breakout. Um, so I'm going to try another layer and see if I can build up coverage. Maybe I'll actually try to build up coverage with my fingers. Sometimes that works a little bit better to keep the pigmentation targeted where you want it. Yeah, this has like a very lotion-y texture. And I think with these products, it works a little bit better to tap onto the skin if you don't want it to sheer out too much. I think I'm really at a limit of how much more product I can add. I don't think this is the kind of foundation that's going to build up in terms of coverage because that first layer is still really just sitting on my skin because it is high in oil concentration. So I don't think it's going to really set down. I have a feeling it's going to stay luminous, especially on top of a luminous primer. I'm not sure how it would react with other primers or with my regular skincare. We're obviously testing out a lot of new things today, but um, I don't think I can build that up too much more. So I'm going to add my regular concealer, my Dior Backstage, and use that to conceal any spots. And then we'll see how it settles into the skin. I'm just using my Thrive Cosmetics, um, what's this called? It's an eyeshadow brush. It's an eyeshadow all over brush, but I actually really like the shape of this for under eye concealer. And it has a little bit of fluffiness that helps with the blending. So that's my concealer done. Obviously I'm not going for like a full coverage, you know, uber perfected base today. I'm just looking for some light coverage, coverage of pigmentation. I can already tell you now that 
this foundation is not going to sink in and it's probably not going to set down. It's been about five minutes since I applied it and you can tell I'm just as shiny as I was before and my skin feels um, sticky. <laughs> Like I can feel the wetness on the skin and it's not absorbing into the skin So I'm gonna say if you're oily, this is probably gonna be a pass for you But if you have dry skin and you need that extra oil and you want that really like beautiful luminous Radiant glossy skin look you might really like this I just think this is for a particular kind of person who wants that no makeup makeup dewy skin kind of look Moving on to cheek products, I have the Patrick Ta um, Bronzer. What is this called? The Creme Contour and Bronzer Duo in She's Sculpted, which is their medium shade. I, um, obviously this is not new to the market, but I've actually never tried this and they sent this over. And I'm really excited about this because I think this contour shade is gonna be a really good um, shade for me. I've used it once, I used it um, yesterday and I really liked how it wore. So let me give you some quick swatches if I can. So those are some very subtle swatches, but that's the cream and that is the bronzer. So I'm just gonna take my Refer 04 brush into the cream, pick up a little bit. It picks up on the brush really nicely. And then I'm just going to lightly sculpt along the cheekbone. These sheer out so nicely on the skin. I don't know if this is a different formula from the um, Creme and Powder blush duos, but to me, the contour, the cream in this formula or in this palette feels dewier and it feels like it blends out a little bit more easily. I feel like with the blushes, it's a little bit stiffer of a cream. So it takes um, a little bit of warming up with a finger or like a little bit of warming up on this skin. This feels like it's a little bit more emollient. I don't know if that's just me though. I'm gonna leave the powder bronzer until after I set my face. And I actually wanna show you some really exciting cream cheek products from Axiology. So Axiology is a small indie brand. They're really invested in sustainability and specifically in being plastic free. So all of their products, these are their um, lid to, lip to lid balmies. They sent this over to me. This is their like super fan pack with all 14 shades, which is super generous. And they look like little crayons. They're super cute. And the wrapping on these is, uh, I think it's recycled paper and it is recyclable, but that's the only packaging on here. The box itself is also paper that you can recycle. So there's no plastic, no pumps, no anything like that. And I was really curious about these because Gabby, Gabby Alvarez loves them and I've seen her use them and they look so gorgeous. And you know, I think this is a hard formula to do well, right? I mean, creams in general, you have to strike that balance between, you know, is it going to be super emollient? Is it going to set to a powder? Is it going to be able to stand on its own without packaging? And I've used these a couple of times and I think they are so gorgeous and they really last. Like not only are these sustainable in many ways and eco-friendly, but they actually have performance power. So there's a range of blushes as well as highlighters. They range from light to deep shades. They have highlighters in multiple shades. This is like a really inclusive cheek range in my opinion. I'm gonna go for something really neutral today, simple, like I said. Um, this is the shade Cinnamon. Let me swatch it for you and that's the shade Cinnamon, which is like a warm beige. I'm pretty sure Gabby has also um, stuck these in like a makeup artist kit in one of those like plastic palettes. Correct me if I'm wrong, Gabby, but they are like moldable if you want them to, but overall they're like a pretty stiff formula, which I like because it means better wear time. So I just like to take a brush and brush the product onto the bristles I like this better than directly applying to the cheek. Personally, I just think you get a more sheared out application, less blending time, you know? You could also use your fingers or a sponge, whatever you want, but this shade 
Do you see that? It's like the most beautiful toasty cinnamon per the name. Obviously, we all know there's a lot of greenwashing that happens in beauty, especially around the question of what's recyclable and what is truly sustainable and is refillable packaging the way forward. And honestly, I feel like axiology makes it really simple where it's like there's actually no packaging. It's just the paper that um, it comes wrapped in. And, you know, I'm not saying that every single product can be uh, wrapped up in this format, but I think they have really shown us that it can be simple, it can be low waste, and the waste itself can be recyclable, especially when it comes to color cosmetics. For highlighter, I'm obviously very shiny, but I want to show you as many products as I can. There's like a white pearl, a pink champagne, a golden champagne, and a deeper, like a mid-tone bronze. I'm going to go for the light champagne. You know what? I'm actually just going to use the same brush because I want to mesh it all together anyway. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to swipe it across the bristles, pick up some product and then stamp it on. And this is a beautiful, like classic champagne shade. There's no obvious glitter, no shimmer, no, um, yeah, like sparkly pieces. It just looks like a glossy shine. I mean, my whole face is super glossy right now. We're gonna take care of that next, but you can really see the highlighter like catching the light right there. It's really beautiful. I have two new powders. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, which I've actually never tried, believe it or not. And then I also have the Fit Glow Beauty Powder, which is a new powder that I've been loving. This one is super matte, so I might just reserve this for the T-zone around my nose and powder everywhere else with the Charlotte Tilbury, which I think is more of a natural satin finish because I think it's going to look kind of weird with my cheeks being so shiny to be super, super matte, like in the center panel of my face. You know what I mean? So I have a little just like Eco Tools powder brush. I'm going to pick up the Charlotte Tilbury powder. This is the shade two medium and just set the under eyes lightly. I know this is like a cult favorite. People go nuts for this powder. I actually like that. It's giving me a little bit of coverage under the eyes. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but because it has some slight pigment, it has like a skin smoothing, perfecting quality to it. It really did create a very smoothed out appearance. And it I only dipped into that powder twice, like once for each side of my face. So I'm going to very conservatively go into the Fit Glow Beauty Powder. This, I, I'm so impressed by this. It's super fine, almost weightless. It is a white powder um, and it does have a little bit of brightening. I would love to see this in a yellow tone as well, but it, takes just a tiny, tiny bit of powder to make your skin look poreless. It's the weirdest thing and it's very good at shine control. And you, if you want like long wear shine control set in place, this is a great powder. And it also has um, like holes and then it has a lid that you can twist so you can control how much powder comes out if you wanna travel with it or something like that. So I'm just gonna take a little bit and really work it into the cap because again, I don't want to over apply and I'm just going to set around my nose. And I really hope the camera picks up just how blurring this is. It's almost like the Chantecaille blurring powder in loose form in terms of the blurring quality. That's kind of why I do wish there were a tinted version of this. Maybe there is, I haven't, checked online actually, but I think that would really be beautiful, like a beige, yellowy beige tone. And then not picking up any more powder, I'm just going to set around my forehead, around my mouth, 
and around my jawline. Basically anywhere that's not the cheeks, but I'm not picking up more product. I'm just using the residue that's left because I don't want it to look, again, like it's matte and then shiny. I just want a gradual blend. I'm just gonna add back a little bit more blush, actually, because I'm going for a sun-kissed look. By the way, these um, set down to like a skin finish and they're really long lasting. I don't know if I mentioned that, but they I was really surprised by the pigmentation of these. So these are multi-use cheek products. You can use them on the eyes and on the lips. I think I like them best on the cheeks. Formula wise, that just works out best for me. On the eyes, um, they did get a bit um, oily on my oily eyelids. And I think that's just because the nature of, you know, cream products, pretty much any cream eyeshadow is going to crease up on me. If you have hooded eyes, you know what I mean. But I just want to say you can use them as a multi-purpose product if you want to. All right, for eyes, I have a few different cream products. I have the About Face Fluid Eye Paint in the shade Capulets, which I haven't shown you on camera. And I also have the About Face um, Eyeshadow Shadow Sticks. Um, I haven't used these on YouTube either. I have used them on Instagram and they're really good. They're long lasting, they're super creamy, very pigmented. And I also have a Jouer cream eyeshadow stick, which I don't think is new, but it's new to me. So I think I'm gonna go in with a base of Capulets all over the eye. I just love this eyeshadow shade as a base for other products. I'm just gonna swipe that directly onto the eye and just kind of blend it out with a large fluffy synthetic brush. Yeah, this is like a really neutral taupe. It doesn't do a lot, but it just adds a bit of something. Like if you just want a little bit of contour almost around the eye area. These are so nice because they give you time to play. I mentioned these in my June favorites, actually. You can use them like I did in that video as like a graphic eye paint or you can also use them like sheared out like this and it gives you a super even blend. It's honestly hard to find a formula that does that well, that both shears out and also acts as like a graphic eye paint, but About Face really got it right with this. I actually went to their um, launch party for AF94, which is the About Face sister brand that Halsey is starting and everything is going to be under $10 and everything is going to be, I think it's exclusive to Walmart and they're launching um, this coming week. Actually, they'll probably have launched the week that you're seeing this. So I'm definitely excited to see more from them. I feel like when it comes to the color category, they've really done it right. So I'm curious to see what a more affordable line will be like. I got to swatch a few things. Their eyeshadow sticks swatched really well. Cream blushes swatched really well. Um, they were out of a lot of things by the time I got to the product stands, so I'll keep you posted on that. Honestly, this is a great one and done shadow. It, it just like, I don't know, it just adds a little bit of taupey warmth under the eye or around the eye and it just looks really natural, like a natural shadow to the eye. This is taking a rosy turn, so I'm going to go into the Jouer uh, shadow stick, what's this called? The Creme Eyeshadow Crayon in the shade Rose Gold. And I'm just gonna apply it directly to the eye, I think. It's a really pretty metallic, very pink. It's almost like a cool toned rose, actually, on me anyway. This is a really pretty, I'm just blending it out with that same brush and Again, it's playing really nicely with that um, fluid eye paint. Just for an easy, shimmery eye. This is called Rose Gold. It's more, I'm not getting the gold <laughs> as much. I think it's more of a metallic rose, in my opinion. I don't get um, much gold to it, but I like it. It's a really pretty neutral rose and it shears out really nicely as well. 
Oh, and I'm using the Real Techniques um, Expert Concealer Brush. I just like it for these kinds of super diffused eye looks because it's so big and it blends out product really well, especially cream product. I think I'm gonna leave the eyes there. I just want a really fresh wash of color. It kind of reminds me of how the cheeks have this like fresh veil of color over them. So I'm gonna keep it simple. And I'm gonna move into mascara. I'm actually really excited to try this. This is the Freck um, Lash Rocket Mascara with lash enhancing peptides. So I think it's supposed to help, you know, encourage healthy lash growth. It's actually really weighty. This is like, I think it's plastic, but it's it's a very heavy plastic. And I've heard great things about this. This has kind of a spiky wand. So you're not getting those regular bristles. It's like that plastic spiky wand. But a lot of times these wands do really well for me with um, separation. So they don't weigh down my lashes. So we'll see. I've curled my lashes. I am gonna use my Peri Para mascara fixer that just helps me with the curl for any lash or any mascara. And then we'll see. Gabby gave this to me and I think she really likes this, so. Ooh. Okay, yep. It's got a lot of really good grip because of those spiky bristles, it's actually getting between each lash. So if you're like me and you have little baby lashes, Asian eyelashes, you know what I mean. It's also building really well. I like that it doesn't pick up too much product at once. I'd actually rather build light layers on the lashes than pick up like a ton of product at once and have to figure out how to brush it through the lashes, you know? Wait, this mascara, this is really good. I am shocked. I like never feel this way about mascaras on my first use, you know? I feel like mascaras need a couple weeks to really develop the formula to get it to dry out a little bit, but this is so separating separating and lengthening. Do you see that? I mean, let me look up so you can see. My lashes are tiny and they look super defined and really lengthened and fluttery and not clumpy. I love this mascara. I never say that on the first use of a mascara, but I'm really impressed. I, I'm shocked. And I don't know if this is just me, but I'm often skeptical of mascaras that say that they have lash conditioning ingredients because in my mind that means that they're like not as good. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just like, oh, maybe they, they'll be more um, oily or wet or the formula will be different, but this just holds and the lift it gives me is really nice. So I hope you can see that on camera on my tiny baby lashes, wow. I don't have anything new for my brows, so I'm gonna do those off camera and then I'll come back to finish off with lips. All right, brows are done. I used my Benefit 24 hour brow setter, my ColourPop brow pencil. I don't honestly change my brow routine very often. For lips, I wanna do something very simple and I'm so excited to try these. Rouge sent over their new um, Le Balm tinted lip balms. How beautiful is this packaging? This is the box says Le Fille de Rouge, has the logo, and then it says Le Balm on the box. Super chic, and then it opens like that. How gorgeous are these? There are three different shades. This is the nude shade called BB. This is the berry shade called Cherry. And this is the bright cherry red, it's called Shoo Shoo. And these are the swatches, so that is BB, Shoo Shoo, and Cherry. And I hope you can see from the swatches that they're really kind of a waxy balm. They're almost like a matte lip balm. And I don't mean that they're matte in finish, but they're not like your melty, ooey gooey balms. They have a really thin consistency and they're very sheer. 
And I really like this kind of formula. I find that they're a little bit longer lasting than your super balmy tinted balms. It's almost like if you had a very sheer lipstick, that's what it reminds me of. Almost like the Gucci sheer lipsticks. So I'm gonna go in, no surprise, with the shade BB, um, which is that nudie shade. Oh, I love that. These also don't seem to have much of a scent. So that is BB, and I layered it on a few times, so it got a little bit deeper on the lips. And then I have actually a new lip liner. I wasn't gonna use it, but I think it'll pair really nicely with this tone. This is the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Lip Crayon in the shade Cala. I don't know if these are, I don't think these are new, but this is new to me. Um, I'm just going to lightly, slightly overline the lips. This is like a perfect pairing. It's like a tawny, browny rose. And these are a gel crayon, so they really glide on. And then I'm just gonna take my finger and slightly diffuse the lip line. I just don't want it to look over-defined. I'm just going for a really blurred, diffused lip. And then I'm gonna need a setting spray for sure, so I'm just using my Milani Make It Last um, Flora edition of this setting spray. So that is the makeup done. I really like the way it turned out in the end. I have to admit, I wasn't sure where we were headed with the foundation. I think it's a little bit too dewy for me. I still can tell that I'm going to get really shiny throughout the day but I really like the overall look. I feel really pretty and fresh. So let's recap everything real quick. I really liked this Charlotte Tilbury primer. I do think my skin looks really soft. It gives me that glow through the foundation. I would not pair it with a super glowy foundation again, but it is something that I definitely will keep using. As for the Jones Road foundation, I can certainly see why a certain type of consumer would really like this. I think it's really skin type dependent. This is dewy, about as dewy as it gets, and it's sheer coverage. So if you're looking for anything outside of that, this won't be for you. But if you do want that really dewy, almost like wet looking, glossy skin, and maybe you have a dry skin type, I do think there's a person out there who would really love this. I can tell you right now, I'm gonna get shiny throughout the day. I can just tell. So I don't know if it's gonna be for me, but it is nice to have something on hand like that for a particular kind of look. So, you know, TBD on my final opinion. For cheek products, oh, I actually just remembered I forgot to put on powder bronzer, but you know what? I'm actually not going to because the skin is so glossy that I feel like it's gonna look kind of weird if I have a powdered down like cheekbone and then the rest of my cheek is shiny, you know what I mean? But I've already used the powder. I can tell you right now this is beautiful and you know, I'm someone who actually struggles to find the right contour shade for my skin tone because I'm neutral, golden olive, depending on the time of year and a lot of times true contour shades are a little bit too ashy for me. But this was the perfect neutral and the bronzer itself is also really beautiful. I like how sheer the powder is and it does give you a little bit of luminosity. It's not like a flat matte at all. As for the blushes, the Axiology products, I can't say enough good things about this. I think they're doing something really different in the beauty space and it's a real commitment to sustainability and low waste packaging. That's not just like introducing more plastic refillable packages, you know what I mean? So I am excited to continue testing the range. And yeah, I think they're really making changes in the beauty industry, so I'm happy to see that. For the eyes, these two were both, I mean, easy to use, easy to blend out. You already know I love the About Face formula. The Jouer eyeshadow stick I think is amazing if you're a one and done eyeshadow person, an eyeshadow minimalist. I did use a primer, so I'll see how it wears throughout the day. Um, I do expect some creasing just in general with any cream eye products because I have oily lids. I don't have like 
unrealistic expectations, but it's so sheer and blended out that I don't really mind if it does crease. The mascara was the total sleeper hit of this Get Ready With Me. I was not expecting this kind of performance. And you know, I've tried a few things from Freck. I've tried their like gel blushes. I actually really like those, but I haven't tried much else. And I am definitely curious to try more. This was separating, lengthening, fluttery. It's holding a curl. And I love, 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 love the wand on this. And the lips, I think this is a fantastic lip liner. It's a really good shade for me, one that I don't have actually. I have a lot of brown toned nudes, but I don't have, this is almost like a mauve brown rose, whereas my other ones are a little bit warmer. And so I think it's actually filling a void in my lip liner category. And I really like how creamy it is. It's also very long wearing. And with the Rouge lip balms, I love this tone. I think these are really easy to wear. You can wear them with no makeup looks or with high makeup looks or high coverage looks. They're just very flexible and you know, it doesn't get much more chic than this. So this is definitely an indulgence, a beautiful indulgence, but the formula feels so nice on the lips. Again, it's really thin. This is not your moisturizing balm formula. Think of it as a sheer lipstick. This formula is much closer to the Merit lipsticks and the Gucci sheer lipsticks than it is to your melty, ooey gooey tinted lip balms. So just keep that in mind. But really Rouge does very little wrong in my eyes. They're just so chic and beautiful and they give you a whole like brand experience when you're using them. And who doesn't wanna pull out one of these gold tubes, these fluted gold tubes? from your bag. I mean, I don't even think I showed you these close up, but they're fluted. They have that silver ring here and then the R for rouge. So that's everything for me today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will of course link everything below in the description box and I'll see you in the next one.